Okay guys, so this is the exam three most missed questions. So we're gonna start off here with, which of the following is a requirement for random sampling? The probabilities cannot change during a series of selections. Each individual, every individual has an equal chance of being selected. Each of the three choices are correct. And D, there must be sampling with replacement. So um, here's the deal. Even if you didn't remember all three of these, sampling with replacement is a requirement. So is every person having an equal chance of being selected, which there, there means um, this one, this third, the first one is also true. Your probabilities can't change. That's really kind of the same thing as saying replacement, um, because if I don't replace a name or I don't replace a number, then my probability of pulling a different name is gonna change every time I pull a name pull um, a name or a number out. So my answer here is C. All three of these do have to be correct in order to um, meet the requirements of random sample. So it says a vertical line drawn through a normal distribution as z equal to negative 60 represents or um, distribute in two sections, the body and the tail. Which proportion of the distribution is in the body? So since we're dealing with a negative um, z-score, that's this center picture here, um, notice that the body here is in B. So we're going to look in column B. So we're going to find our 0.6. And remember, when we're looking at our chart, we're going to drop that negative and just look for 0.6. The, B, the reason we're doing the B is because that's the body of it, which is right here. So our answer is that guy right there, which happens to be C. Okay, so which proportion, what, which proportion of a normal distribution is located between negative 1.75 and positive 1.75? So what we're gonna do here is we are actually gonna use this last one. And what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna find out what it is from here to 1.75, but because we also want this negative 1.75, whatever we get, because we want this too, we're gonna double it. So we're gonna come here with the 1.75, and we're gonna look at the proportion here, but that's not gonna be my answer. I'm gonna take this 0.4599, and I'm gonna multiply it times two, and that is gonna give us 0.9198. So 91.98% of my data lives between negative 1.75 and a positive 1.75. Okay, the population is normally distributed with a mean of 145 and a standard deviation of 20. What is the percentile rank of x equal to 136. And whenever we're doing the percentile rank, we always want to the left of the z-score, whether that's column A or B, depending on if my z-score is positive or negative, that will depend on which column I look at, but I always wanna to do to the left of that. So starting off, let's find our z-score. So we have 136 minus 145 divided by 20. So it's going to be negative 9 over 20, and that is going to be a negative 0 0.45. So again, since we have a negative z, we're going to be looking at this one. Since I want to the left of my z-score, I want c or the tail. So I'm going to be looking in this column right here. I'm going to find my 0 0.45 and this is my answer right there. Notice that my answers are in decimals, so all we do is we're taking the, I mean in percent, we do the 3264 times 100%, and that's where we get the 32.64%. So remember what percentile rankings are all about is how, how many people scored, what percentage of people scored below you. Okay, so if you are at the 32.64% ranking, that means 32.64% of people who took this test or whatever this happens to be, the score scored lower than your, your score at 136. 
Okay, so question number five. Again, we're still looking at this kind of idea of percentile ranking, reading our chart here. It says a normal distribution has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of six. If you randomly select from this distribution, what is the probability that the score will be greater than x equal to 46? So since we're saying greater than, that means we want to the right of the z-score. Now, I don't know if I'm going to look in column A or B yet because I need to find out if my Z is positive or negative, but I do know I want to the right of my Z-score. So let's find our Z-score first. So we're going to do 46 minus 50 divided by 6. So 46 minus 50 is going to give us, I believe, negative 4. So negative 4 over 6. is going to be equal to a negative 0.67. Again, whenever we're doing our um, z-scores, we're always rounding to two decimal places. So again, since we are negative, we're gonna be looking at this second picture with our z being negative. We want greater than or to the right, so that means we wanna look in column B because we wanna be bigger. So that's gonna be this column right here. And then looking at the row for 67, we end up with 74 or 0.7486, which in this case is answer B. Okay. Question number six. Casey is a gym teacher who's developed a training regimen to promote physical health among elementary school students. She knows that scores on, on a measure of physical fitness health are normally distributed. Um, with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 10. She randomly selects one student and completes the training regimen. The, score, the student scores an 82. Based on the score, Cassie can conclude that the training regimen um, is either successful or not successful. And I do have the answers here in the second heart. So what we're gonna do on this is we're gonna find that z-score. So we're gonna have 82 minus 75 Divide it by 10. So 82 minus 75 is going to give us 7 over 10, which is going to give us a 0 0.70. So what we want to say is we want to talk about basically the percentile rank for this. So since this is a positive percentile rank, So what we're going to do, we're going to do this guy right here, because this is a positive z-score. We're going to find that c. We're going to find out how many people would score above this 24.2, or this, yeah. So we're going to use this guy here in the tail, and we find that 24.20% would score better. than the student. Okay, so if we go to the next page, I want you to kind of keep all that in the same mind and we read our possible answers. So does Casey concludes that it does not have an effect on physical health because this score or, or a larger score would be expected 24.20% of the time, um, even if the training regimen did not have an effect. Um, it does not have an effect of the physical students because the score, the score or larger would be expected 75% of the time. Well, we know that that's not right because um, remember our chart here when we did this and we have our z-score here, this would be more than, okay? So, and that was the 24.20. So we know B is not right because we would not expect this to happen 75% of the time. So it does not have an effect because the score or larger would be expected 75%. Again, we know that's not right because it's not that. It does not have an effect on the physical health because the score or larger would be expected 24.2% of the time, even if the training regimen does not have an effect. Oh, I'm so sorry. I totally read that. Does have an effect. No, it does 
not have an effect? So our only option on this answer would be A. It does not have an effect. And part of the reason we know it doesn't have an effect is, again, our z-score from the previous page was, was 0.7. That's not even one standard deviation away from the actual mean of the, the population. So that's not going to be an effective workout regimen to, to increase um, their training.